Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. All right, next question is from YouTube subscriber Grant Keel. Grant asks, what are the best training and pharmaceutical practices to reduce cardiovascular risk in bodybuilding? Um, there's some simple low-hanging fruit you can do and some stuff that I suck at and I probably should be better at, but probably the lowest hanging fruit that there is is just doing some fucking cardio, getting up and taking a walk every morning. Uh, or if you want to do a little bit of hit cardio post-workout for cardiovascular health, that is going to have a major impact on cardiovascular health. Probably the second simplest thing to do is most dudes, especially when you're running PEDs, PEDs are going to cause lipid skewing because how they affect lipid metabolism in the liver, even injectables. You're going to see some increase in LDL and some decrease in HDL that just happens when you're running PEDs and how they cause the liver to metabolize lipids uh, and uh, how they affect lipid metabolism. So um, cleaning your diet up. Uh, Eating a diet, keeping saturated fat low on your diet. When you're on PEDs, it's just like drives me nuts and i it's like riding a motorcycle without a helmet i mean i hear these bros all the time and say there's no you know high cholesterol doesn't cause cause heart attacks and strokes and yet i see it happen over and over and over and over and over again i do hundreds of these consults annually blood consults if you want me to take a look at your blood work and help you get it cleaned up i can do that you can book a consult but i see this all the time i see these dumb motherfuckers that eat a high fat diet they're slamming the Anadrol and Tren, and then they end up with a fucking stent in their heart because they have a blocked coronary artery from their high-fat diet. They end up with a high calcium score, calcium CT score. They end up with plaque formation from it. Is it's just you know because you end up they're dumping sea salt all over fucking everything, eating butter, eating sausages, and then they end up with these uh, with you know. Poor cardiovascular health. It, it doesn't rear its head quickly. It's, you know, it's an accumulation thing. It's five, ten years down the road. You might be fine today. You might be fine next year. You may never catch anything. It's, it's like it's like that crazy uncle that you have that smokes and drinks his entire life and lives to be 90. But the way I look at it, it's your, you're buckling your seatbelt up. You're putting your motorcycle helmet on, whatever. You're reducing risk by keeping your saturated fats lower in your diet while you're running PEDs which are going to elevate risk of lipid skewing. So I would say diet is the second and easiest thing that you can do. Then we can talk about supplements. There's some over-the-counter supplements as a third line of defense. Start with cardio. Second would be diet. Third would be, uh, you know, and if you're a PED user, staying away from orals. The worst lipid skewing I see is from oral anabolics. For the most part, if you want to run an oral once in a while, but just limit it. It's not something you should be doing all the fucking time. Be very, very, very careful with your use of oral anabolics that they they will fuck you up when it comes to your lipids long term. It's not so much the liver that I worry about. It's it's that. But there are some over-the-counter supplements that we can use, citrus bergamot, uh, red rice, yeast extract, fish oil. Fish oil is probably the simplest and easiest one to add that will improve HDL. Um, you know, natokinase is a, is another one that's potentially could be could be used. Uh, and then beyond that, if you can't keep your lipids in range, kind of like me, I have genetic dyslipidemia. You may need pharmaceutical intervention, which would be in the form of a statin and potentially ezetimibe. Uh, I run the combo of both. I use a hydrophilic statin. This is another thing that drives me nuts as bros seem to be on this bandwagon that statins are going to somehow fucking kill you. And meanwhile, they're taking bathtub trend made in, made in Tijuana and experimental uh, experimental peptide RU579544 from, from Bulgaria, and they don't give a fuck about that. You know, they may cause you to get butthole cancer, but they're, they're cool with that. But you mention a statin and then these dumb motherfuckers... They think they're going to die from taking a statin. They're probably one of the most benign, well-studied drugs that you can take. And, you know, there are some risks, like, like there are with any other any other drugs. In Most of it's associated with the lipophilic statins. There are some neurocognitive risks. There are some potential risks to muscle health. So if you want to avoid those, just take a hydrophilic statin. I, I take resuvastatin, which is... 
a hydrophilic statin, which I, I've been able with that combination of that and some mesetamide, which works through the, through the GI, I've been able to get my my um, LDL down into the low 60s, high 50s, which is going to be much safer long-term risk for cardiovascular. It's still not a guarantee. I mean, you can still get in a wreck and die with your helmet on on a motorcycle. I mean, we're doing other things, but we are reducing risk. They're lowering the levels of risk. So I would say there, I would start start at the high level first, just a little bit of fucking cardio, keeping your keeping your diet healthy, start there. And then you can throw in some over-the-counter supplements if you need additional help. And if that doesn't help it, then pharmaceutical intervention would be the last line of defense. Also, be very intelligent with your PED choices. Stay away from orals. Stay away from things that are known to skew lipids aggressively. Probably trend. You don't want to be running trend year-round. Things that are more gentle on your lipids, you know, testosterone, GH, and primable and masteron, those are probably going to be more gentle on your lipids, although they will cause some HDL suppression. I got so hyper-focused on the cholesterol portion, I almost forgot about blood pressure. Blood pressure is also important to manage. The reason I harp on the cholesterol one is that that's the one that most dudes seem to just outright ignore. It's Most guys these days seem to pay attention to blood pressure. Uh, they There's more awareness about blood pressure. But overall, for cardiovascular risk, we look at it, and I talked about it on a recent video, if you want to check it out, that I had up about the primary cause of acute death in bodybuilders that study that they did over, I think it was 20,000 bodybuilders over 16, professional bodybuilders over a 16 year period of time, acute cardiovascular events were the number one cause. So it, the primary driver of the stuff is going to be high blood pressure, high cholesterol, using steroids that are cardiotoxic. I would stay away from stuff that's cardiotoxic. Make sure that your blood pressure is in check. A lot of times just simply cleaning your diet up and doing more cardio is going to help. Uh, managing water retention is going to be another thing. It, for whatever reason, dudes think it's okay to let their estrogen run wild and let the uh, let water retention get out of control. It, that That's going to increase cardiovascular risk as well. Uh, managing your sleep, sleep apnea, ma making sure that you're getting a good night's sleep, making sure the sleep apnea is managed. A, a lot of dudes, are. I found out myself, I was going hypoxic at night. That's not great for your cardiovascular health. Uh, 19 NORS trend orals are going to be rough on cardiovascular health. Spend the majority of your time when you're running PEDs on gentler, more cardio safe compounds like Test, Primabone, Masteron, things like that, if you can even find them right now. Uh, stuff like that, uh, you know, making sure the blood pressure is kept under control. Don't be afraid to use pharmaceutical intervention if it's necessary. I, I don't think you need to go out and jump on blood pressure and cholesterol meds if you don't need them. Uh, I, I see guys doing it as a preventative. I, I don't know that that's necessary, but you know, if you do need them, then don't be afraid to use them. And periodically take breaks from your PEDs. If you want more information on the cholesterol lowering uh, pro approach that I talked about, I have a free document up on my website. I want to make sure that guys have access to this so they can keep themselves healthy. If you go to my website, anabolicbodybuilding.com, head over to the section that says free stuff on the menu. You can download it for free. The only thing I ask for is your email address. I might spam you with some stuff once in a while, but I try to keep that to the minimum. Anyway, that's all I got for you on this one.